Hello, I'm going to show you today how I built my replica of the HAL 9000 interface panel from 2001 A Space Odyssey. So this started when I found this item in a charity shop. So that is a camera lens adapter and then I've also got a polarizing filter, an LED that I've wired for 12 volts, sorry for 5 volts, and a piece of speaker grill and some foil tape. And piece of 4mm MDF which is what I'm going to make the enclosure out of. Now this uh, camera lens adapter that I'm measuring up here, this is not the fisheye lens that they used in the movie. That is a very rare and very expensive lens. This is a an adapter to adapt, I think it's a 49mm camera to a, a 52mm lens. It's a, a very common component and I think it cost me about a pound from a charity shop. So I've cut out all this MDF after marking it out and we're now going to glue it together just using um, a bit of super glue. Now the little bits of uh, square wood is just literally some um, uh, 10 mil square pine section that um, and it is purely just to reinforce the corners and to give more surface area for the glue. Now you could use wood glue for this. I'm using super glue basically for speed because this I wanted to do that get this built virtually within a day. I mean, as it happened, it was over two days, but that's purely to allow for paint drying time. So this is just assembly using super glue and. As I say, it's it's quite simple. It produces a pretty strong bond, seems to, on this. Possibly not as strong as uh, using wood glue would. So now I'm just sort of measuring and cutting the uh, bit of um, metal speaker grill mesh and just uh, cut it down with some tin snips and now taking it over to the other side and... That's the noise of the belt sander where I am just essentially smoothing the edges and taking the surface paint back to allow me to repaint it with some silver spray paint. So now I'm going into trying to make the MDF look like aluminium and by far the best way to make something look like aluminium is to cover it with this foil tape now. This foil tape's a product which is designed for edging um, expanded polystyrene insulation, so something like um, Kingspan type board, and this is what they use to uh, seal the edges of it. But it is essentially it's thin self adhesive aluminium foil. So I'm wrapping that over and then just using the end of a pencil to burnish it flat and that's one piece done and I'm now just going to do all the other pieces which are now done and we're going to assemble this again just using super glue. So this isn't um, actually dimensioned off any, any uh, images online or anything, it is very approximate, it's me looking at an image online and doing what appears to look right. So I've taken the dimensions are just purely me saying, yeah, that looks about right. I can only make it this big because this is the size of my lens. This is the size of my piece of speaker grill. And it's just getting it into the right sort of form factor that you see. So now I'm just clamping this together with some uh, sort of one-handed clamps just to uh, hold it in place while I add the final section and just running some super glue down the edges again and uh, leaving that to dry. So that's now dried. I've also cut a front piece from MDF and cut a hole with a hole saw for the lens which I've just wrapped a piece of um, its draft excluder tape around the edge of and that's purely just to bulk it out and to give that, it will be that silver rim that you see on the prop. Now you can see that I have already attempted to spray it silver with like a chrome effect spray paint, which didn't work. 
So instead, I'm going to do the same thing as I've done with everything else, which is to give it a foil covering. So I've already wrapped a thin strip of foil around the edge. And now I'm going to cut a circle of foil using a compass cutter out of this, this larger, larger width um, insulation edging tape. So that's just going at it with a compass cutter and taking a circular piece out. It does tend to snag a little bit. I think that might be just because the blade isn't particularly sharp in the compass cutter. And then I'm going to do the same or to take an inner an inner diameter for that. Well, an outer diameter of the lens, an inner diameter for my circle. Again, just with the, measuring with this set of calipers. And then transferring that onto the scale on the compass cutter. So this is just a really cheap compass cutter. I think it was from the works. But uh, I'm sure there are better ones available. And that's just taking the inner circle out. Leaving just a thin ring of self-adhesive foil. So I've cut a, slot in, a slit in it. And I'm now just applying it onto the... Uh, onto the insulation, a draft excluder, sorry, tape. And going all the way around, and then I will sort of burnish it as best I can. Not effect, not as effective when you've got a sort of fairly spongy tape behind it, rather than a um, piece of wood. So that's sort of the, the final effect on that. So the logo here, I've printed off just on the PC and then on a standard inkjet printer and just sprayed some clear lacquer over it. I'm just going to glue it on with contact adhesive. The piece of MDF that you're seeing there, I sealed it with PVA and then gave it a single coat of black satin uh, spray paint, then waited for that to fully dry overnight then sanded it in one direction only, so only in like the horizontal direction, and that's to give, you can just about see the lines on it, that's to give that same effect. I think the movie was used um, a piece of chemically blackened aluminium, but it did, ha it did sort of on photos of the prop, you can see it does have sort of that graining, that side to side graining, so I've sort of replicated that just with a sa by sanding it and then giving it another coat of paint over the top of that. So again, I'm just gluing this part in with super glue, and then there's a bottom piece here. Now that doesn't really need that hole in it at the moment. I basically I put the hole in it so that I could add a speaker if I decided to at any point in the future. Not really necessary for just building it as a sort of non-functioning prop. It it was. It was one of these things where it's very easy to put that hole in now, but would be quite difficult to do it later, so I just did it. Then that the grill is just push fitted. The lens here, I'm just gonna run again just a bead of super glue around the edge and drop that in. Trying not to get super glue on my fingers. And that's in, and that is not gonna go anywhere. So you can start to see this coming together and looking like the sort of the eye of the HAL 9000. So now we've got our polarizing filter and before I put glue that in and seal it into place, I'm just gonna clean all the lenses, all the glass with a bit of uh, methylated spirits just to remove any dust, any grease marks, any finger marks. And that uh, just so it looks spot on once it's together. So I'm just cleaning that, cleaning the back, cleaning one side of the polarizing filter. Now the polarizing filter I'm not going to glue with super glue. I'm going to glue it with contact adhesive because if you put super glue into a sealed area with clear material, it will fog the clear material, it would fog the lens and it would fog the polarizing filter. So there's no super glue on that inside bit at all. All the glue is put around the edge on the outside and now I'm just going to run a thin bead of contact adhesive around the edge of the uh, the lens adapter 
and then I'm just going to let that harden a little bit before I put the polarizing filter onto the outside. Now you don't have to use a polarizing filter, any filter, any clear filter would do. I think I'm just scraping off a little bit of excess glue from where I glued the, uh, the logo on. And that is the build of the device done. So now I'm just um, adding an LED to give the, the red glow to the eye. And this LED, I've already soldered a resistor to it to allow the LED to run on 5 volts. So ultimately this will run on USB power essentially, that's the idea. So I've just got some fine wire there. I'm going to tin the ends of the wire, tin the legs of the LED, solder them together and then insulate it all with tape. So just tinning the ends of the wire. And then that's done, drop that out of the clamp. And we're going to bring that, the, uh, the device in, tin the two legs of the LED and solder on the positive and negative wires, obviously noting that LEDs are polarised, you do need to get these the right way around. So the, the black plastic bit that I'm putting those into it is just the cap off the camera lens adapter that I drilled a 5mm hole through on my drill press and then just inserted the LED into the hole. I'm just going to add a little tiny dab of super glue to the back of the LED just to stop it, it stop any chance of it falling out of the hole. Probably not necessary, but it did seem a little bit loose. So now I'm just flattening the legs of the LED and the resistor against the back of that plastic lens cap and putting a bit of insulation tape on it just so it can't short out if it happens to get hung against any sort of metal surface. So that's just insulating that up and then we're just going to bring in the bench power supply for a test. So this is just set to 5 volts, clip the uh, leads on and this should start glowing red in a minute. There we go, that's glowing red. And you can see how much it looks like the, the lens in the movie even though it isn't the, the, the classic fisheye lens they used. So now I've just mounted this on the wall of my workshop. You can see, I mean this is just mounted on a painted breeze block wall, but it does sort of look quite effective as the, uh, as the prop from the movie. As I say, it's not precisely dimensioned by any means, it is just a, a reasonably close match. So if you enjoyed that content, please uh, like, subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications. Thank you very much.